Welcome back. The topic is character. We're talking with Robert Hanley from the Entertainment Fellowship and Michael Josephson of the Josephson Institute of Ethics. And in a few minutes, we'll give you the phone numbers for both of these organizations. Uh, let's get out of the way quickly. We didn't answer the difference between character, religion, and values. There are different components. Well, values is the much broader term, which are all the things we believe in that motivate our behavior. That includes good values and bad values, practical ones and moral ones. Character is the assemblage of those good values that make us a person that we will judge as either being positive or negative or good or bad. Religion is a source of values, almost uniformly good values if we exclude satanic religions and some other weird religions. So religion becomes a source of your values that feeds into your character. And the character is ultimately the tree. That's who you are. Your reputation is the shadow. Michael, I love it when you talk that way. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get back, let's get back to another discussion here. Yes. Uh, let's include uh, character in the realm of politics, corporate character, and once again, the marketplace, because I contend, while I agree with, with everything that you've said so far, the marketplace rules. In other words, if there is no market for sleaze, there wouldn't be any sleaze. I if there's no market for... I don't think it's... A, it, I think both are responsible. I think, I think a lot of the public, uh, uh, people watching this morning are probably saying, yeah, boy, keep talking that way. The stuff on TV is terrible. Well, you, you don't have to, well, it's true. It's true. And, and I would suggest, lovingly and caringly, that you stop complaining to the person sitting next to you about the junk on TV and pick up a pencil and paper and say, I don't like what that's, that show is saying. I don't, I, write Chevy or whoever the sponsors are. So he validates are. what I'm talking about. Well, wait a minute, I'm not done. I think it's, it's both. It's the person who's writing the show. It's the person producing the show, directing the show. These people have just as much a responsibility. We're a family in this country, in this world, etc., and we do have a responsibility not only to ourselves but to each other. And if so, if we continue to put out uh, and be a part of shows that are espousing immoral uh, values, we are partly responsible for what people at home are watching on their TVs. And the Michael? people at home are just as responsible for going along with that guy. Senator Moynihan once talked about dumbing down deviancy, which means we take deviancy on the air and we show it often enough and people think it's normal. You cannot use the excuse that you're catering to the market when you're also creating the market. It's true that if you ended up having a show that shows car accidents, I am sure you'd have a market. And if you did it well enough, you'd generate a bigger market. Don't do it. It's wrong, it's sleazy, and it's the ultimate definition of prostitution. I'm not interested in all these guys counting the points and counting their cars if what they're saying is, I don't care what impact I have in society as long as I'm rich. If I fed my kids that way, they'd eat nothing but Twinkies and Kool-Aid. I make the market. Does that same criteria apply to corporations, for example? Absolutely. Oh. And I'm working with many companies, some of whom are responsible, some of whom are not. You have to decide what products you'll produce and how you're going to advertise them. Some, like Nike, in my opinion, totally give up the notion of goodness, and they participate in this just win and just do it. Other commercials, Johnson & Johnson is a company I know, makes a conscientious effort in who they sponsor and what they do to send positive messages. We all choose, and character means you're going to choose even when it costs more than you want to pay. From, and, and from corporations to, uh, to politics, it was interesting. We, we mentioned earlier about Senator Dole and, and President Clinton and coming out on the entertainment industry and cleaning up its act. It was interesting to me to note during the campaign of 96, uh, the presidential campaign, I looked at the commercials, the television campaign commercials, and whenever it was a Democratic commercial, there was President Clinton in living color, but Senator Dole was portrayed in black and white, often tapered with, obviously uh, edited in such a way that he looked bad. And Senator Dole did the same thing with President so Clinton. Hit this, hit, what's the point? There Here's hit, the point. Here's the point. If you're going to come out on the, on the, uh, against the entertainment industry for what they're doing with this medium as far as making poor choices, which minute. is dishonest, which I feel is not right, in, when it's for your own advantage to become president of the United States, aren't you misleading the public Absolutely. by tampering with the commercial? So the bottom line is, hey, you're better than that. It's up to the individual. If, if, 
if a politician's going to change politics, it's up to somebody in that party to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. And if you lose the election, you lose the election. If you're going to tell me not to do... Should a, it be up to the voter to say, I just won't vote for a person who does that? It is up And you had, how big was the turnout this time? But, but 25%. we're missing the point. Of course it's up to the voter, just as it is up to the individual politician. Character's about everybody doing what they should do on their own. Lily Tomlin once said, the problem with the rat race is even if you win, you're still a rat. <laughs> in the last analysis, we have to choose whether we want to be something constructive in this world. Tell it as a way with words. <laughs> when we come back, we'll have some phone numbers that uh, you can uh, write down and get in touch with uh, with our guests. So let's hear it for Lily Tomlin. We've only got a minute left. I'll give each of you 30 seconds to uh, pass along the information where you are and what you do. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I guess you're starting with me. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Entertainment Fellowship, you can reach us at uh, area code 818-909-0841. And again, we are a nonprofit grassroots organization. We're made up of people in the entertainment industry, actors, writers, directors, producers, and people who support our mission to enable people in the entertainment industry to recognize and apply Judeo-Christian principles into their careers. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Mr. Joseph. Thank you. Uh, Character Counts is one of the divisions of the Joseph Institute, which is also a nonprofit organization. We're at 310-306-1868. If you want to get involved, bringing it to your schools, bring it to your youth groups, YMCA's, boys and girls clubs, buy the video. It's a terrific way to teach your kids. It's called Kids for Character. It's all the big stores. We just want you to be active in bringing character to the next generation. Thank Give you. us those six pillars real quick. Trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. The six pillars of character. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. We're out of time.